and I'm going to share my screen once again. This past weekend, this picture is from this past weekend, there were people collecting signatures at Market Basket for a ballot initiative. Um, so the state of Massachusetts, the legislature recently passed a law that allows undocumented immigrants to apply for driver's licenses. And the thinking behind this is that it makes everyone safer because if they apply, they take a road test, they go through all the same process as the rest of us. And in fact, law enforcement agencies, some law enforcement agencies, including Waltham PD, um, supported this idea because they thought it would reduce traffic stops. However, um, Governor Baker vetoed it. The legislature overrided the veto. The Massachusetts Republican Party immediately sued, um, went to the Supreme Judicial Court and lost. So now there is a ballot initiative um, to try to get a question on the ballot um, for this uh, election um, that would overturn that law and ban undocumented immigrants from having licenses. Um, this is being organized online by a group called Fair and Secure Mass. Um, but from reading up on it, it appears that it's mostly being organized by the Mass Republican Party. Jim Lyons, the chair of the party, um, is behind it. And many of the Republican candidates for office have participated in these signing events. Um, in this picture, you can see Jim Dixon, who's the chair of um, the Waltham Republicans, appear to be involved in organizing um, this one that happened this weekend, I went by to see what was going on um, because there had also been another collection um, a week ago, the prior weekend. And at that one, protesters arrived and they had signs that said, declined to sign, ask me why. So they were standing there with signs. People could choose to talk to them or could choose to go over to the signature table. Um, Councillor Paz was involved in organizing that. And on social media, on the Waltham Politics page, um, somebody named Molly Ferdinand, although the, the moderator, who's awesome, Elizabeth Lear, she's a really good moderator, and she pointed out this is probably a fake account. But anyways, this person was posting, um, kind of calling out, um, calling these group a left-wing mob, and basically saying they had used blocking and intimidation to prevent people from signing. And they posted a bunch of pictures that were supposed to support that, but they don't really support the idea that they were blocking or intimidating um, from what I could see. Jim Lyons, the head of the Republican Party, amplified this and called Councillor Paz a radical leftist. <laughs> so congratulations, Councillor Paz, on being called a radical leftist by the chair of the, the very far right chair of the um, Massachusetts GOP. Um, one of the people who was collecting signatures last week and also this week was David Kane, who's sort of a local um, politico. He shows up at a lot of political events in the Waltham, Watertown area, and he was one of the unmasked people who showed up at our school committee meeting about masks last fall. So uh, this organization posts a lot of pictures on their Facebook of their signings and people who have protested them, calling them blockers or intimidators. And this is actually one of the pictures they posted to make the point that they were being intimidating. So you could, this was from Waltham, so you can judge for yourself how intimidating uh, these protesters are. This picture is maybe my favorite part of this whole story. Um, uh, Mrs. Arena was there also um, at this weekend's signing. Um, there were no protests this weekend, at least not during the time I was there. Um, there were people coming by who going into shop who were getting into, uh, there were a few arguments between shoppers and people who were um, helping with the signing. There were people who were there officially helping and then there were people hanging out like Mrs. Arena was just hanging out. Um, so there were a few confrontations, but no protests as far as I saw. One of the alarming things I saw this weekend though was one of the signature collectors was wearing a t-shirt for CORE, which is a far right group um, that uh, the Mrs. Arena is also involved with, um, but the CORE North was co-founded by Mark Sahady, who was arrested for his role in January 6th, and by other former co-founders of Super Happy Fun America, which is the far right group that organized some very contentious and in some cases violent events in Boston. So I went up to this woman and I said, can I ask you about your shirt? And she said, you already know what it is and you're just here to start trouble. 
And she told me if I didn't go away immediately, she'd have me arrested. She was also wearing, although you can't see it in my picture, she was also wearing a straight pride button that looked like it was from the straight pride event that Super Happy Fun America did back in 2019. So that's my picture. So I talked to um, some of the people who were there to try to get a better understanding of why they're doing this. Um, Councillor Paz, in response to people calling him a radical leftist and saying he was an intimidator, he released a very nice statement online that said the First Amendment is a two-way street. He also said in that statement that these people were using hateful language to talk about immigrants. Um, when I was there, I didn't hear them using slurs per se, but they kept using the word illegals. So I asked them a lot of questions about who they consider illegal. I asked about asylum seekers, are they illegal? Are migrant workers illegal? Are dreamers illegal? And um, got sort of, from some of them, very confusing answers to that. There was one person who had pretty precise answers to it and seemed to maybe sort of know what he was talking about. Um, and I, one of the reasons I asked them was because the Jeff Deal campaign had sent out a text blast where they attacked Maura Healy's campaign for hiring an undocumented person on their staff. And the person they're referring to is someone who was brought to this country as a kid and is now working here legally because of the DREAM Act. So I asked people, do you think that was okay to attack someone who's here legally? And um, they mostly said no, although they, at least two of them said they were Jeff Deal fans. Um, but one of them said, no, no, it's something about, you know, this is being abused. The fact that someone's here legally doesn't mean much. Um, but one important thing that all of the people I talked to agreed on, I asked a bunch of people if they'd comment on camera and nobody would comment on camera or give me their name. So that's why I'm not citing anyone. But all the people I talked to emphasize that the most important reason for this ballot initiative is because if undocumented immigrants have a driver's license, that means they can vote, which is false. A oh, driver's license didn't, doesn't give you the right to vote. So when I challenged them on that, they explained what they mean is, no, it doesn't give you the right to vote now, but inevitably the state will require um, driver's licenses for voting at some point. And at that point, um, it will become a problem. And in fact, one of the people I talked to believes that this is the motivation, that this is part of a plan by the Democrats in the legislature to they're setting up a plan to allow um, undocumented immigrants to vote illegally, make it easier for them to vote to illegally because they believe that's going to help them in politics. And so this effort, in addition to seemingly being about anti-immigrant sentiment, it is very much tied to the big lie idea, the big lie about the 2020 election and the, the belief that um, voter fraud is rampant and um, various states passing laws that are actually preventing people from voting in the interest of supposedly increasing uh, voter safety. So I don't think it's likely Mass is going to pass a law um, that requires driver's licenses to vote. And I think this aspect of their campaign is very misleading. Um, so it seems to me this effort um, is based largely on bigotry and on right-wing conspiracy theories. And so I sent in my pictures to Walt M. Night's Watch, and they've also been posting about it. If you want to learn more info, background on there, you can check Walt M. Night's Watch on Twitter. Um, and it, this organization said they were going to be coming back here to do these signings every Monday, Thursday, and Friday at Waltham Market Basket from four to seven. Um, so you, if you want to talk to them, you can go talk to them. You cannot block them or intimidate them, but you can talk to them. And if you hear them using hateful language, you can report that to the store manager who can kick them out, regardless of what they tell you. The store manager does have the power to kick them out if they're being hateful. Um, but they just today published an updated list and that was not on there. So it's not clear if they've canceled the Waltham ones or if they're just not listing it. So if you do go on Thursday or Friday, um, let us know if you, if you see them still there. Um, any comments on that, uh, Chris or James? Yeah, the point about uh, them being concerned about uh, eventually like that they'll be enacting like a driver's license like a uh, requirement to vote or something it's like very a, slow that's what it's a slippery slope yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it's 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 funny because it's like usually the the cons usually the driver's license gets brought brought in to like drive down voter turnout and stuff and now they're upset that it like might potentially be enabling other people to vote and it's like maybe we shouldn't be like you know 
having licenses to vote anyway. But um, I mean, I have many thoughts about this, but the biggest one uh, for me is that I have no idea why this is turning out to be such a big deal. Like this is grown adults being offended by not getting immediately what they want. The protesters are not radical leftists. They are inviting people to chat with them. Like they're not black blocking it up and flipping their table and tearing up their sheets. Like what is radical about what they're doing? Why I don't understand why. Well, yeah, they're, I don't they're understand. Tell, why. They're, they're they're definitely telling on themselves, and they're they're telegraphing that that's what they want to have happen to them. You know, not necessarily <laughs> that's what is happening. You know, so they desperately it, want to be oppressed. Yes. Yeah, I mean that brings up a good point, which is that people who are very conservative don't have a lot of experience with with doing things that feel wrong socially with being social actors, you know what I mean? So often when they have an opinion and someone disagrees with them, they feel like they're being censored because they're not used to actually being censored. And um, so you saw that a little bit in the way these folks reacted to protesters who were not very scary, but they, they acted, you know, um, they were really on edge. And, and this is maybe an advantage <laughs> that we, that, that people on the left have because we're used to dealing with being socially <laughs> disliked by somebody. And in fact, for those who don't know, um, the, the neo-Nazi who lives in Waltham, um, Liam McNeil, he actually, he was at UMass Lowell and he said he refused to leave and they said they couldn't expel him. And then later he dropped out due to social pressure. He couldn't handle going to school with people who didn't like him because he was a Nazi. So, <laughs> You know, sometimes the ability to uh, not care about being disagreed with or called out as weird in public can be a, a big advantage uh, for those of us who are not uh, fascists or reactionaries. Any other comments on that? All you right. Did, you did it. Thanks for going there. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm glad I went by. There was also a reporter from WCAC there, so hopefully they'll be writing something about it. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. It looks like they'll come back and there could be no protests, so we'll see how it develops.